Meet the CBX D5 Yamaha audio processor. This one is a little bit obsolete. It uh, is uh, being produced by Yamaha in the 90s of the uh, former century. And it is a lovely piece of equipment because it has effect processors. It has uh, four channel uh, recording possibilities with SCSI, but I'm going to use it as a standalone unit, being controlled by an own box I build, and this box is wirelessly connected via that, that little white box there. It contains uh, an XB receiver and the control box on the other camera uh, contains a XB sender. Ok, I'll switch the CBX on and see what it does. I'm going to go to control the uh, CBX wirelessly via uh, MIDI exclusive, system exclusive commands of which it took a long time to find out which were the right ones. I have them all. I can send them to anyone who wants that. It's a lot of work. I did a whole winter in 2015-2016 making this machine. Now switching on the control. It contains 11 processors, 11 Arduinos, 328PPU processors. And I uh, programmed the system exclusive messages in there. Uh, the audio faders here are connected to the output of the CBX, so they just control the output level, not the input level. You can choose to let it control the input level, but I chose to do the output level because in my studio room it's more practical. Uh, let's see what happens. I'll have to choose the right combination of uh, frequencies and input to get music. Oh, first I'll start the music. When I press this button here, it'll jump to 44. And if I turn it, I can choose which working frequency I want to achieve. And I choose 44 for in. At the back, there's a little controller that controls the output. If I push that, it jumps back to 48 and uh, um, disables all effects or EQ settings I might have chosen. So, right now it should have some audio input. It doesn't. I don't see anything on the meter, so I will check. Now, that is funny. Oh yeah, it's analog. That's why. Of course, it's in the analog input. I have to choose the digital input. <coughs> This one. Uh, standard, when I switch it on, it will put on channel 1 and 2. But now I've connected it to channel 3 and 4, which I preset here to the preset value. And then I push and I turn to activate. This works on all the knobs. You push and you activate. That way you can preset any value you want. And after that, um, send it to the unit. This is the uh, control for the for the effect. Let's put it up a bit. Push it and turn it. This is parameter 1, 
which means the length of the reverb. This is parameter 4, which controls the delay on the effect. Now if you don't want it, and you want a dry signal, just push this one. It will go back to the original soundtrack. There is also a bit of tone uh, EQ here. I choose somewhere in the middle, which is about 1200. I push and I activate, because it's here very low. I'll put it up and then suddenly it'll hook in there making it a little bit louder here and then choose a uh, higher frequency it'll go until 18,000 Hertz this is about I think 15, 12, 15 and it makes a wide setting. And again, if you want to disable that one, just push it here. I don't know. Which makes it all dry again. If I touch it again, it'll pick up. But I'm sure we'll meet again. There's also a dial here. Um, zoom in on the dial. The dial dials the effect presets in a funny way. Let's see how. I choose five now. It doesn't show anything until you push it a little bit. That way you push the shunt switch. In the telephone system the shunt switch prevents the audio uh, from the pulses to get in the, the conversation. So for now it, I use this to enter it, to enter the number here. This is preset number five, which is a mildly reverbing. Pushing it and turning it activates it again. Now on the original CBX there were 81 presets. I can also turn this knob here for faster access of the presets. And then I'll go to let's say, well let's say 94. I found out that it goes all the way up until 176 presets. On the original one, there was just 81. Now if you want to go back to zero in a very fast way, then you just choose the zero, enter it, there's zero again. If you use the uh, dial and you want to have 15, you choose the five, you hold it, until it flashes, then you enter 15. If you hold it and you let it flash for one, two, three times, release and enter, you have 35 here. Neat, ne? But I chose to also incorporate the uh, faster uh, rotary encoder and then put it in this mode. Ooh, that's a bit too loud. I have to make it a little bit less loud. Ooh, it's still too loud. Yeah, the effect sent a little bit down. Yeah, 
it still gets a bit in the red, so I have to adjust the input there. I adjusted my uh, audio interface on the computer to give a little bit less signal here, so I have more headroom. I can push this up here. Wow. Zoom out a little. And zoom in on this one here. Well, if I turn this one, you can choose between the AES Y2 uh, The, the okay, what's it called? SPDIF and the analog input. And now it's on Yamaha 2 digital interface. This is SPDIF. And now it just has a little bit two less signal here on three and four. Here it comes up again. Bit of effect. Let's see about uh, an effect preset 136. A bit of flanging. At zero once more, and there's no effect at all. Okay, that was it. Hope you like it. I got all the files, I got all the system exclusive codes. If you want them, you can download them. I'll put up the, uh, the URL in the movie. Bye-bye.